Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Usatine, and I am going to present a webcast coordinated by the IDS. The topic is benign tumors, including clear cell acanthoma, sebaceous hyperplasia, molluscum, porokeratosis, and poroma. And I am a professor of dermatology and cutaneous surgery at the University of Texas Health in San Antonio. Our first topic, clear cell acanthoma and sebaceous hyperplasia. What are these? Well, the clear cell acanthoma is a benign erythematous epidermal tumor, usually found on the leg, and sebaceous hyperplasia is the overgrowth of sebaceous glands that can mimic a BCC on the face. Here was a case that we saw of a clear cell acanthoma. And if you look at it, you can see that there is a string of pearls pattern uh, when we look with dermoscopy. And this is the pattern as depicted here. And here it is close up showing those red vascular pearls basically in a string, various strings throughout the benign tumor. Here's a case that we will take a closer look at. And again, you can see a very nice string of pearls pattern, red pearls in a string. And that's the vascular pattern of a CCA. Now, the dermoscopy of the CCA was described in a number of articles. And here's a good example of the clinical and now the dermoscopic and we can see that pattern of a string of pearls. Here is the histology. But we should also keep in mind that the string of pearls pattern has been reported in cases that are non-clear cell acanthomas. So it is possible to see in this case some seborrheic keratoses and in LPLK that were um, having that same pattern. So the string of pearls pattern is uh, specific for a CCA, but it's not exclusive. Looking at sebaceous hyperplasia, this was a uh, fine article and gives us this great photograph uh, showing that um, popcorn type pattern and the uh, blood vessels that look like a um, crown. And so we have here some of my photos with the crown pattern and then the look for the popcorn pattern. The popcorn is the sebaceous hyperplasia glands, or the sebaceous glands that are hyperplastic. And so here is our histology, clinical, and this little opening that we see where, where the sebum can come out and then the glands with the, um, the vessels around it, the crown vessels. We call them crown-like vessels or crown vessels because they don't cross the midline. They come to the middle and they end right there. And here it is more close up. And so here we're seeing these nice crown vessels and popcorn-like structures. Basically, the popcorn is the hyperplastic sebaceous glands, which is lipid um, you know, lots of lipid in it. And so I think I, I, one way to remember it is it's like buttered popcorn with, with the buttered lipid on the popcorn. And in fact, if we um, press on some of these, we'll find that they may extrude sebum with some gentle pressure. And we may even see some yellow coloration uh, due to this yellow color in the sebum. That's the buttered popcorn. And here's some more uh, buttered popcorn and some of the crown vessels with the central opening, sometimes described as a little bit of toffee candy. Now, molluscum also has crown vessels, uh, but instead of a central gland opening, it has central umbilication. And so here's the central umbilication in the dermoscopy with those crown vessels. And in darker skin, uh, we're seeing the umbilication here. 
the umbilication there, and not really clear crown vessels, uh, but still a pattern that we can recognize as molluscum. And the pattern is created by this histologic um, description of, well, this is hist the histology of molluscum with the molluscum bodies and the central opening making this umbilication. Now, nodular BCC has vessels, but they do cross the midline. So these arborizing vessels cross the midline. And for sebaceous hyperplasia, um, well, the, the question here is which is which is sebaceous hyperplasia? Which is the BCC? Well, I think I already just told you. Uh, so here we go. Sebaceous hyperplasia, BCC, vessels cross the midline, vessels do not. Let's try this one here, which is the sebaceous hyperplasia, which is the BCC. Look at it. And here are the answers. And the answers are that the BCC has vessels that cross the midline. These vessels really are on the periphery. They come to the middle, but they shouldn't cross over. Now, sometimes we'll see something like an irregular serpentine vessel like this in a melanoma, and this is not a string of pearls. This is a beautiful string of pearls pattern, actually, from the ISIC archive, part of the IDS. Looking at porokeratoses, this is a group of benign hyperkeratotic disorders characterized by a thread-like raised hyperkeratotic border called a cornoid lamella. And this article uh, was a multi-center study of the IDS. And here we will take a look at some of uh, what they've concluded. And their major findings were that there is a keratin rim in 92% of porokeratosis. And there are dotted or glomerular vessels visible on the inside um, inside that rim in 49%. There were some less common findings, but those are the two I want you to remember. And there were some f without a keratin rim. So these are gonna be the most difficult, probably requires a biopsy to know the answer. But if we go back to this cornoid lamella, which creates the keratin rim, we describe it like the Great Wall of China. Here it is. It has like two rims to it, sort of two two lines on the on the either side of this this wall, and that's how this looks. So it looks like it has like a double rim effect, and that double rim effect is a nice way of thinking about it, um, using the Great Wall of China as a metaphor. Okay, and here's an example of disseminated superficial actinic porokeratosis. And with this DSAP, we're seeing the keratin rim on one of the lesions here. Here it is clinically, multiple porokeratoses. And here's a single one, sometimes called of Mabelli. And here it is here. And here we're seeing uh, not only now the, the uh, keratin rim, uh, wall of China, but some beautiful dotted vessels in the middle. And together, that is the pattern of a single porokeratosis. Something like this is so classic, you don't even need to biopsy that. The, the dermoscopic and clinical together make a very fine uh, diagnosis. Now here was a porokeratosis on the leg. Here is it, here it is clinically, very nice keratin rim with some dotted vessels. Maybe in this case, you might consider biopsy, just make sure it's not squamous cell carcinoma, which of course can present with scale and dotted vessels or, or Bowen's disease. But this was benign. Now the poroma is a much less common uh, finding. It's a benign sweat gland tumor. And the um, uh, clinical presentation 
can mimic other malignant neoplasms such as an amelanotic melanoma. So if you see this, you're not gonna leave it uh, no matter what your dermoscopy shows. Uh, let's take a look at what the dermoscopy does show. So this was a well done study uh, that shows us that many of the patterns that we, we, we can see look like flowers or leaves. So that's the flower-like, leaf-like patterns in uh, eccrine poromas. And actually this study also was conducted by the uh, IDS. So uh, Go International Dermoscopy Society, great organization. If you haven't joined, please do join because um, a lot of great research and education comes out of uh, our organization. Uh, here's some of the patterns, the, these branched vessels with rounded endings, yellow structuralist areas, white interlacing areas around the vessels, and milky globules. And here's a beautiful example uh, with branched vessels, rounded endings, and milky red globules. Beautiful pattern like a flower. This was a case that I saw in a black man uh, who uh, had this on his scalp. And so we put our dermatoscope on this as we do for every tumor. And what did we see? We saw these vessels that are starting to look like they might be flower-like or florets. And here we see them more close up, sort of flower-like, maybe leaf-like, but definitely uh, making us think of an eccrine paroma, which in fact it turned out to be after we excised it and sent it to pathology. So always resect and send paromas. Uh, they're not ones to uh, let sit there. Of course, they also, most of the patients want them off anyway. Uh, but here was one uh, from Dr. Golden where he uh, uh, actually resected it and found this to be a porocarcinoma and not a benign poroma. Uh, so, uh, Similar kind of pattern in here with the vascular pattern, um, but uh, better to uh, cut it out. So the conclusion is that dermoscopy can be a great tool for diagnosing benign tumors and disorders such as our clear cell acanthoma, sebaceous hyperplasia, porokeratosis, poroma, molluscum. The vascular structures are most helpful along with the keratin rim in a porokeratosis. And always, always, when in doubt, cut it out. Thank you for your attention. And thank you to the IDS for all the great work that is done. Join now if you haven't already.